Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Henry Fonda, Richard Conte, and Kathy Downs in My Darling Clementine. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you the story of Wyatt Earp. Among the many heroes of the early West, Wyatt Earp and his three brothers stand as symbols of the fighting marshal, the sheriff who fought with fist and gun to establish law and order on our frontiers. Earp is played tonight by Henry Fonda in 20th Century Fox's screen success, My Darling Clementine. Co-starred with Henry is Kathy Downs, also from the original cast. And that new and talented arrival among screen stars, Richard Conte. My Darling Clementine was filmed in Arizona, in that primitive, weirdly beautiful country of the Navajos. There were no laundry facilities there, of course. And Kathy Downs was telling me how she and other members of the troupe did their own, in tubs of lukewarm water and Lux Flakes. They were observed in this daily ceremony by a group of fascinated squaws. And one of Kathy's favorite souvenirs is a cake of soap made of yucca roots that an Indian woman gave her in exchange for, yes, you're right, a box of Lux, which only goes to prove that the bargaining instincts of the red man, or red woman in this case, are as keen as ever. It's playtime, and here's Henry Fonda, starred as Wyatt Earp, Richard Conte as Doc Holliday, and Kathy Downs as my darling Clementine. Our curtain rises on the first act. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. thousand cattle gone astray left my range and wandered away and the sons of guns Arizona the 1880s along a broad sweep of rangeland a herd of cattle settles down for the night nearby around the campfire four men have just finished supper the men are brothers, the Earp brothers, James, Virgil, Morgan, and Wyatt. Wyatt Earp, until recently, United States Marshal at Dodge City. Suddenly, breaking through the twilight, five riders draw up to the camp. Howdy. Howdy. Wait here, boys. I'll see what they want. My name's Clinton, mister. He's here my boys. Evening. Howdy. Howdy. Your cattle, huh? Yeah, me and my brothers are trailing them on to California. They'll never make it, son. If you ain't got them committed to no shipper, I'll take them off your hands. Thanks, not interested. Me and my boys will make you a good offer. Pay you silver, five dollars a head. Paid more than that in Mexico. It'll be a sorry-looking lot by the time you get to California. Oh, they'll feed out when we get the grass. Say, what do they call this place? Just over the rise there, a big town called Tombstone. Fine town. Tombstone? Yeah, I heard of it. Well, me and my brothers might ride in there tonight. Get ourselves a shave, maybe. Glass of beer. Yeah, you'd enjoy yourself. Wide awake, wide open town, Tombstone. Well, thanks for stopping by. Change your mind about them cattle, I'll be around. Come on, boys. More coffee, Wyatt? No, thanks, Morg. That was a tribe of Clanton. Look about as mangy as we do. Well, let's get to cleaning up supper dishes. Yeah, James, that was mighty fine chow, son. One of these days, you're going to be as good a cook as more. Well, I'm learning and trying. That's what I keep telling him to do. Corey Sue ain't marrying him because he's so pretty. It's because he's such an awful good cook. <laughs> That's a fact. Hey, if we're going into town, what are we waiting for? Supper dishes, Brother Verge. Oh, go on. I'll clean up here. Might turn to ten hurt anyway. Don't be lonesome, kid. <laughs> I won't be lonesome. You can sit here and think about your girl. I bet you marry Corey Sue first day we get back home. Look, I... I didn't show you this. I bought it for her last week. Think she'll like it? 
Say, what do you call that thing? A necklace? It's sort of, I guess. It's a pendant. Solid silver. Sure is pretty, James. I look mighty pretty in them yellow curls of Corey Sue's. Oh, ain't that the truth now? Well, if you're going into town, you better mount up. Keep the fire going, James. We'll be back four or five hours. <laughs> Yeah, sure wasted a dollar for that bath in town. Could have stayed with James and just stood out in this rain. It's coming down, all right. That's some wide open town, that tombstone, huh? Yeah. Funny you running into Mr. Scott. What, Mr. Scott? Knew him back in Dodge City, Verge. He's mayor of Tombstone now. Know what he did? Offered Wyatt a job as marshal. $250 a month. $250? Well, Wyatt, you, you didn't take it, did you? I sure didn't. We're in the cattle business. I don't know whether we are or not. Pull up. What are you talking about? Look, those boulders. We left our cattle just north of those boulders. Uh, how, how can you see in all this rain? I can see, all right. And they're gone, Wyatt. The cattle's gone. James. A chuck wagon's still there, see? Well, likely James is in the wagon. Come on. He's dead, Wyatt. James is dead. Shot in the back. Our kid brother shot in the back. Morgan... Virgil, we're going back into town. When we got there, Mr. Scott, James was dead and the cattle was gone. All I want to know is whether that marshaling job's still open. Sure is, Wyatt. I'd like to take it then, providing my two other brothers are deputies. When do you want to start? Now. Who runs the gambling in this town? A fellow named Holiday. Doc Holiday. Who runs the cattle? The Clantons. Old man Clanton and his four sons. Say, uh, where are you figuring on living, Wyatt? Hadn't thought about it yet. I'll get some rooms here in the hotel for you and your brothers. It's where you all in over the jail first thing in the morning. Any idea where I might find old man Clanton? Hard to say. Uh, Doc Holliday's place, maybe. Thanks. I'll try Holliday. Good evening, Mr. Clanton. Huh? Oh, evening. Well, you were right. Huh? Our cattle. They said I wouldn't get very far with them. It was Russell this evening. And so? Well, that's too bad. Hear that, boys? The fellas heard was Russell. Well, guess you ain't heading for California then. No, I just got myself a job. Cow punching? Marshalling. Marshal? In Tombstone? Well, good luck to you, Mr. Uh... Earp. Wyatt Earp. Huh? Oh. Well, good night, Mr. Earp. Come on, boys. This here's not much of a grave, James. It's the best we can do for you now. Eighteen years old. Didn't get much of a chance, did you? I wrote to Pa and Corey Sue. They're going to be all busted up over it. Corey Sue's young, but Pa... Guess he'll never get over it. I'll be coming out here to see you regular, James. So Morgan and Verge. We're going to be around here for a while. Can't tell. Maybe when we leave this country, young kids like you will be able to grow up and live safe. We're not forgetting you, James. Get nowhere sitting around the jailhouse, Wyatt. Where's Verge? Washing up in the hotel. He's all day scouting the Clanton's range. They've been moving cattle all right, but that doesn't prove anything. Got any ideas? No. Well, I'm going over to Doc Holliday's place. Holliday's back in town? If he is, I'll wait for him. What about Holliday's girl? The one who sings there? Chihuahua? She won't talk. See you later, Mort. <laughs> Baldy, you, you busy? The bar's kind of slow this afternoon, Chihuahua. You know when Doc's coming back. I hear he'll be back tonight. Maybe. I ain't heard. Where has he been this time, Baldy? Tucson, over the border. Who knows where Doc goes? That's right. Who knows? Well, 
I see the new marshal, the poker player. He's been doing all right, too. I don't like marshals. Maybe I'll go hang around that table a little while. Careful, Chihuahua. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Well, Marshal, your play. My play. I love poker. Yes, sir, I really love poker. Oh, howdy, Chihuahua. Mind if I watch? Uh, hang around. Maybe you'll bring me some luck. It's still your play, Marshal. Now, what would I do if I was in your boots, Colonel? You're a real gambler. Huh? But you're living at it, huh? Oh, well, I just... You might... drew three cards and I stood pat, and yet you raised me. Now, the question is, what should I do? Take your time, Marshal. Poker's a game of chance, isn't it, Chihuahua? Some people think so. But the way you're standing over my shoulder increases the odds considerable. What is the matter, sport? Oh, nothing, except you just told the colonel what cards I'm holding. Oh, you got eyes in the back of your head, huh? That mirror over the bar. I saw you raise three fingers. You better get out of here, Chihuahua. Listen, you thin star yeah, If Martin. I catch you doing that again, I'll send you back over the border where you belong. This is Doc Holliday's town. When he comes better back... Better run along, Chihuahua. No, sure. Sure, I run along. Now, uh, where were we? Sorry, gents, but I don't like eight-handed poker deals. Oh, well, now, Marshal, you don't think no, that I... No, 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 no. Ah, let's see. You just raised me. Yeah. Well, seeing as how you know I got three of a kind, I'll just have to call you. Yes, you lose, Marshal. Got a little straight that should. Well? Doc just walked in. Huh? Oh, that's Doc Holliday, huh? Nice looking fella. I thought I told you to get out of town, Colonel. Have a heart, Doc. I said I'd cut you in. I told you to get out of town. I'm going, Doc. I, I'm going. Well, you're headed in the wrong direction. That door's for ladies and gentlemen. You go through the kitchen. Sure, Doc. Sure. Go on with your game, gentlemen. It's uh, it's getting late. I better cash in. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I better... This sure is a hard town for a fellow to have a quiet game of poker in. Sorry to have broken it up. I just don't like the way the colonel plays. Doesn't matter. I've just been killing time anyway. Been waiting to see you. I've been out of town, Mr. Rip. So, you know who I am. I know all about you. And your reason for being here. Yeah, I've heard a lot about you too, Doc. You left your mark around in Deadwood, Denver, and places. Fact, a man could almost follow your trail going from graveyard to graveyard. There's a graveyard here too. The biggest graveyard west of the Rockies. Marshals and I usually get along much better when we understand that right away. Get your meaning, Doc. Good. Have a drink. Thanks. Believe I will. Baldy, a glass of champagne for the marshal. Make it whiskey. You're my guest, marshal. Champagne. Plan on staying here long? A while. Till you catch the rustlers who killed your brother, huh? That's the general idea. What's the specific idea? I don't follow you quite. Well, you haven't taken it into your head to deliver us all from evil. Oh, I hadn't thought of it quite like that, but it ain't a bad idea. It's what I'm getting paid for. Let's get down to cases, Marshal. What about me, for instance? How would you handle me if I took a notion to break the law? You already have, from what I've heard. The law is my business, Doc. I see we're in opposite camps. But why draw a gun? To learn how good you are with yours? I'm a great one for education, Marshal. Sorry, but I'm not carrying a gun. We can remedy that quickly enough. Are hey, you down there? Let's have your gun. There's a gun, Mr. Rick. Yeah. Looks familiar, too. Belongs to my brother. Thanks, Verge. It's all right, Wyatt. I've got another. Now, if I killed you, Marshal, chances are he'd kill me. Chances are? Such odds would ruin my reputation as a gambler. Folks might say you were a fool to have started it. So let's have that drink instead. Verge, meet Doc Holliday. Howdy, Doc. Howdy. Have a drink. Thank you. I'd like you to join us, too, Baldy. Yes, sir. Thank you, Doc. Well, gentlemen, your help. Your help, Doc. <laughs> Doc, you, you all right? I'm all right. Fill up the glass. Going to the performance tonight, Marshal? Performance? Haven't you noticed the posters? Oh, that. Mm. Shakespeare's come to Tombstone, huh? Yeah, it's been a long time since I've heard Shakespeare. How would you like to join me? Fine. With or without a gun? With, by all means. Next time, your brother might not be around. <laughs> Where are we going, Doc? To find our Shakespearean actor. The theater's filled with people and he hasn't even showed up. 
I'm afraid Mr. Dennison P. Thorndike is drunk. Well, drunk or not, we'd better get him there. Last three shows we've had, the star's been drunk, and the management had to fill in with bird imitations. Well, the population's getting mighty sick of bird imitations, Mr. Rep. Guess we'd better find Thorndike then. Unless you want to have a riot on your hands. Me, it doesn't matter. I'd still like to know where we're going. Well, there's a little Mexican saloon. Since he's not at my place, chances are he's there. Really, gentlemen, I must get to the theater. Shut up, Thorndike. We want any more poetry, understand? If you're an actor, act. Maybe he'd rather dance. Uh... No. no, no, please. I want to see some acting, Finn. You can dance later. Very well. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noble... Well, there's your actor, Mr. Rep. The sling How to get him out of here. Now, wait. Stay back. Fortune. I want to hear this. Or to take arms against a sea of troubles by opposing end them. To die. To sleep no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. It is a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die. To sleep. To sleep a chance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled out this mortal coil? Ah, of... that's enough. You don't know nothing but poems. Leave him alone, Clanton. What? Oh. Oh, sure, Doc, sure. Please go on, Mr. Thorndike. Thank you, sir. Must give us pause. Uh, uh, must give us pause. Uh, uh, please help me, sir. I... Must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make? <coughs> Excuse me, Marshal. <coughs> What's the matter with Doc? I don't know. They're waiting for you at the theater, Mr. Thorndike. Thank you, sir. Shakespeare was not intended for tavern, sir. Nor for tavern louts. Hey, wait a minute, Marshal. Hamlet stays here. What's going on in here? My apologies, Mr. Clanton. I had to hit Ike. And I guess I creased one of Finn's ribs. Finn, you all right? Uh, I'm all right. I guess they had a little too much to drink, Mr. Earp. Sure, I figured they were just having themselves some fun. Come on, Mr. Thorndike, I'll take you to the theater. What happened? Well, I pulled my gun on him, Paul, and when I did... You see this whip? All of you? You see this whip? No, no. Next time, when one of you pulls a gun, kill him! Understand? Kill him! Kill him! Our stars, Henry Fonda, Richard Conti, and Kathy Downs will return in a moment with Act Two of My Darling Clementine. Libby, I hear there was quite a bit of monkey business going on over at Paramount Studios while they were filming that exciting adventure story, Calcutta. Monkey shines, to be exact. How come? Well, when I arrived on the set, there was Gail Russell. She co-stars in Calcutta with Alan Ladd and William Bendix, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. And the scene of the picture is a glamorous, mysterious city in India. Well, there was Gail, admiring the most expensive prop in the picture. Well, let's see. Uh, India? Mm, probably a gem. Mm, good guess. It's a gorgeous 106-carat star sapphire. But while Gail was admiring it, a cute ringtail monkey was watching her just a few feet away. Josephine, that's the monkey's name, became so intrigued with the shining stone that she made a dash for Gail, tried to climb on her lap, and in the scuffle... Gail's costume suffered? No, but her beautifully sheer nylon stockings were ruined. Oh, too late for Lux then, wasn't it, Libby? Well, yes, but Lux came to the rescue all the same. You see, the wardrobe department keeps dozens of beautiful nylons lovely with Lux care. So whisk, out comes another pair, Gail changes, and the shooting goes on. Of course, Josephine was in disgrace. Well, I should think so. Really lovely sheer nylons are treasures these days. But then, that kind of an accident isn't likely to happen to many girls. No, but often a run pops for apparently no reason at all. At least, that's what some girls think. The chances are those unexplained runs come from using a strong soap. Lux girls know better than to risk that, Libby. For we've proved in hundreds of tests by an impartial laboratory how Lux cuts down runs over 50%. 
Yes, Lux stockings lasted twice as long under the most severe strain tests. Twice as long as stockings washed with a strong soap. So it's never wise to take chances. Use gentle Lux to double stocking wear. We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of My Darling Clementine, starring Henry Fonda as Wyatt Earp, Richard Conte as Doc Holliday, and Kathy Downs as Clementine. It's a couple of weeks now since Wyatt Earp settled down in Tombstone, but the new marshal's no closer to discovering the murderer of his young brother, James. It could be the Clantons. Could even be Doc Holliday. Doc, who's haunted by a racking cough. Doc, the tavern keeper who quotes Shakespeare and scorns the law. One person might know the full story of mysterious Doc Holliday, his dark-skinned girl, Chihuahua. But Chihuahua's full of smiles and silence. Early one morning, the westbound stagecoach leaves a passenger at the mansion house. Alone on the porch, Wyatt Earp watches her come up the hotel steps. If you don't mind getting out of your chair, I have some baggage there. Oh, sorry, miss. Thank you. Hotel clerk seems to have disappeared. As a rule, he watches out for the stage. Any special place you want those bags? Well, I'd like them brought to my room, but if the clerk is... Oh. Something wrong? Uh... Why, you're the sheriff. Uh-uh. Marshal. Oh, I, I thought you were employed here. I'm terribly sorry. No need to be sorry. By the time I got myself out of that chair, you, uh, here for a visit? I'm looking for someone. Dr. John Holliday. You mean Doc Holliday? Well, I imagine so. Doc rode out of town early this morning, miss. Hard to say when he'll be back. Supper time, most likely. Oh, here's the clerk now. Got a customer for you, Dad. We want a nice room for Miss, uh... Carter. Clementine Carter. Yes, ma'am. Now then, if you just sign the register, Miss Carter. <laughs> Don't mean nothing. Tones up the place a little, though. You really didn't have to bring my bags upstairs, Marshal. I'm sure the clerk... I told him to send up a couple of buckets of hot water in case you wanted to take a bath. That's very thoughtful of you. Well, here's your room. Hey, what do you know? What's the matter? Looks like they put you right across the hall from Doc Holliday. That's John's room? Yes, ma'am. I wonder if it's locked. He doesn't have to lock his doors, miss. Nobody in Tombstone would be fool enough to waltz in there. I would. <laughs> Come along, man. This is where he lives, then. Where John lives. That's right, miss. Look. On the wall. His diploma from college. Yeah. That's a diploma, all right. He's a wonderful surgeon, isn't he? I wouldn't know, ma'am. And here. His photograph. I remember when he had this picture taken. See? He wore a mustache then. That other picture, that's you, ain't it? Yes, I was a nurse then in a hospital in Boston. That's... That's how I met John. Well, I... I guess I better get along, miss. Thank you for your trouble, Marshal. Real pleasure. Hope Doc shows up soon. Would he come straight here to the hotel, do you suppose? Well, I imagine he'd go to that place down the street. What place? Well, it... Sort of a bar. Well, then I'll wait for him there. What's the name of it? Well, it's called Doc Holliday's place. What's the matter, Chihuahua? Well, what did you stop singing for? That girl who just spoke to you. She was here before, wasn't she? Yeah, come in twice this afternoon. What does she want? Looking for Doc. So you sent her to him. Well, of course I did. He's back now, ain't he? Maybe he wants to see her, too. Oh, I don't look so mad, Chihuahua. You know Doc. Yes, I know Doc. Well, stop worrying. You're the only girl he pays any attention to. Am I? Still, I should like to know what's going on back there. Oh, forget it, will you? Come on, sing something. Sing something for old Baldy. No, sure, Baldy. Sure. Mm. I just don't know what to say. Aren't you glad to see me, John? Sure, Clem, sure, but... Oh, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine, Wyatt Earp, Miss Carter. We met earlier today, John. Good evening, Mr. Earp. Howdy, ma'am. Well, I'll see you both later. It's 
Wonderful to see you again, John. Why did you come here? You're happy I came? Oh, I can see you're not. You're upset. It was ill-advised, Clem. Any less ill-advised than the way that you gave up medicine and left Boston. How did you know I was here? I didn't know. I've been months finding you. From cow camp to cow camp, from one mining town to another. Well, I should think that if nothing more, you'd at least be flattered to have a girl chase you. Look, Clem, you've got to get out of here. No. This is no place for your kind of person. What kind of a person am I, John? Please go home, Clem. Go back where you belong. Forget that you ever... <coughs> you heard what he said? He said, go back home. Who are you? It does not matter who I am. He's sick, isn't he? Those coughing spells. Does he have them frequently? Too often. Each time he's worse. Oh, that frightens you, doesn't it? Maybe now you go home, huh? Maybe now you leave him alone. <coughs> You're ill, John. That's why you left home. That has nothing to do with it. Well, as if that would have mattered. I tell you, Clem, my health has nothing to do with it. I don't believe you. Then I'll give you the truth. The man you once knew doesn't exist anymore. There's not a vestige of him left. Nothing. Now, come on. I'll take you back to the hotel. John, please, you, you can't send me away like this. You can't run away from me any more than you can run away from yourself. Now, I know why you don't care whether you live or die. Why well, you've tried to get yourself killed. Oh, I've heard all about you, John, and you're wrong, so wrong. You've no right to destroy yourself. A world of friends back home who love you. And I love you. There's a stage leaving in the morning. Take it, Clem. If you don't, I'm moving on. Very well, John. I'll go. Come here, Abe. If you think your brothers can finish supper all by themselves, I'd like to see you. Sure, Doc. Trouble. I don't think so, Morg. From where I'm standing, Earp, that tin badge you're wearing doesn't give you the right to stick your nose into my personal affairs. What's eating you, Doc? Why didn't you tell me Miss Carter had come to Tombstone? Didn't she tell you why? She wanted to surprise you. All right, all right. Now let me alone. I'll be around for a while if you have any more questions. Baldy? Yeah, Doc? Give me that bottle in the glass. Oh, Doc, you're not going to start drinking whiskey again, are I you? I said give me that bottle in the glass. Uh, I'll pour it, Doc. Shut up. Singing, will you? Oh, Doc. Doc, what is wrong? Oh, go squall your stupid little song somewhere else. Now get out of here. Doc sure lapping up the liquor. I'm going to see if I can get him out of here. Finish your supper, Wyatt. It's all right, I'm finished. Have a drink, Marshal. No thanks, Doc. I said have a drink. No thanks. Look, Doc. I ain't trying to poke my nose into your personal affairs, but... From where I stand, a man will have to go a long way before he finds a nicer girl than that Miss Carter. Or a prettier one, for that matter. There ain't a man... Marshal, you've said enough. Just as you say, Doc. And this isn't any of your business, either. Keep that up and you'll be out of business. You've just given me a brilliant idea. It's time I tempted fate. What are you pulling your gun for? Now, let's see. Who's in here tonight that I don't particularly like? That's a sucker game, Doc. There's probably 50 men around town just waiting to see you get liquored up so they can fill you full of holes. Build them a great reputation. The man that killed Doc Holliday. See those fellas playing poker down there? If that lamp should suddenly crash down on their table, they may not like it. I'm going to find out, Marshal. Sorry I got to do this, Doc. Give me a hand, Baldy. Let's get Doc to bed. Morning, Wyatt. Morning, Morg. Morning, Verge. Have a good breakfast? Uh, three chops and four eggs. Feel pretty good. Hey, sitting all alone on the porch? Yeah, just came from the barber shop. Had my hair cut, see? Looks nice. Verge and I figured on riding out to James's grave. Figured I might ride out myself this afternoon. Say, is that a church bell I hear? Yeah, that's a church bell, all right. You know, if I wasn't in the territory, I'd swear we were back home on a Sunday morning. Yeah. With Ma scrubbing our necks to go to camp meeting. Uh, <laughs> by golly, I bet that's what it is. A camp meeting. Could be. You know, I can almost swear I smell the honeysuckle blossoms. That's me. 
barber put some stuff on my hair. <laughs> I'd sure like to know what's happened that a church bell is ringing in this godforsaken town. They're trying to build a new church, Verge. Need more money, though. They're having a social this morning after the service. Uh, mayor said there'd likely be some dancing, too. You know, there's probably a lot of nice people around here. We just ain't met them. Well, let's get started, Morg. Uh, see you later, Wyatt. See you later. Oh, hiya, Chihuahua. Morning, Chihuahua. Looking for someone? I'm going into the hotel. Any objections? Doc's still in his room, I think. He won't be there long when he finds out you're here. You hit him last night. He come down here and twist that tin badge around your heart. Yes? What is it? I came up here to see Doc. I decide to see you first. What about? Oh, I see you are packing your clothes. I said, what about? I am Chihuahua. I am Doc Holliday's girl. I just wanted to make sure you were packing. Slamming doors, women yelling. I'm trying to rest. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You're not angry, are you? And you know, Chihuahua. What right have I got to be angry with anyone or anything? She's packing, Doc. She's leaving town. Happy, aren't you? Oh, yes. Get me a drink. There's a bottle on that table. Yes, Doc. Chihuahua, I'm going into Mexico for a week or two. While I'm gone, I want Doc, to... take me with you. Please, Doc, please. Take you with me? Sure, why not? Doc! I've got another idea. Go over to the saloon. Tell Bolly I want a wedding breakfast prepared. Flowers, champagne, everything. Then get into your prettiest dress, Chihuahua. And if Baldy starts asking questions, just tell him the queen is dead. Long live the queen. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Carter. Good morning, Mr. Earth. You've been standing there long? I just came down. I thought I'd wait here on the porch for the stagecoach. You leaving? I'm going back east. Well, eastbound stage don't leave till noon on Sunday. It's a mighty short visit, miss. John thinks I've overstayed my visit already. Well, I don't know, ma'am, but if you ask me, I... I think you're giving up too easy. If you ask me, I don't think you know too much about pride. No, ma'am, maybe I don't. You hear that, Miss Carter? A church bell. Church bell and tombstone. I believe that's the first church bell I've heard in months. <laughs> this may sound strange, Marshal, but I love your town in the morning. The air so clean and clear and the scent of the desert flowers. And... That's me. Oh. <laughs> Barber. Are you going to the church service? Oh, I've been sitting here pondering over it. If you do, may I go with you? You? Well... Well, I guess I'm through pondering, Miss Carter. I'd sure admire to take you to church. And so, folks, while all we got is a foundation and a bell, I hereby declare their first church of tombstone, which uh, don't have a name yet, nor no preacher either, officially dedicated. Now, I don't pretend to be a preacher, but I've read the good book from cover to cover and back again. And I never found nothing against dancing. So we'll commence by having a dead blasted good dance. Start the music, boys. Well, will you oblige me, ma'am? Thank you. Morning, Marshal. No, I... oh, Mr. Clanton. I don't mean to bust up your dancing, miss, but I've been wanting to ask the Marshal something. Well, it's all right, Mr. Clanton. Find out who shot your brother yet? I've got a pretty fair idea. Good. Maybe this town will turn out like the mayor said. Honest and God-fearing. When you figure to round up them rustlers? It won't be for a while, Mr. Clanton, but I promise you, you'll be one of the first to know. Much obliged, Marshal. Much obliged. Sorry, ma'am. Well, after all, you are Marshal here. There's some who think I forgot what I took the job for. I haven't forgotten. Well... Now then, Miss Carter. Well, we're back in time for Sunday dinner, ma'am. If you want to freshen up, you... Hello, Doc. Hello, Marshal. Hello, Clem. Hello, John. You might better say goodbye. Where are I'm you leaving, going? Clem. It doesn't matter. I told you last night to leave Tombstone. I told you if you didn't, I would. Just a minute, Doc. Running people out of town, that's my business. That's what I'm getting paid for. Miss Carter or any other decent citizens can stay here just as long as they want to. We're through talking, Marshal. 
My advice to you is to start carrying your gun. That's good advice, Doc. Thanks. You! This is the second time you've burst into my room, Chihuahua. I wish you'd knock after this. He's gone. Dog's left town. He was going to Mexico and take me with him. He was going to marry me. Where'd you leave in town too? I had every intention of leaving town. But I've just about changed my mind. The stage leaves in 20 minutes. You'll be on it, you hear? You'll be on it. What's going on, Miss Carter? It looks like a slight case of hysteria, Marshal. What are you doing here, Chihuahua? None of your business. Why don't you behave yourself? Now go back where you belong. I'm not getting out till she leaves town. What do you know about it anyway? What do you know about Doc and me? We were going to get married. He was going to marry me until these milk What's that you're wearing? Doc, Doc told me to dress up. There would be wedding breakfast and... That pennant around your neck, where'd you get it? Doc gave it to me. Where do you think I got it? You're sure that's the truth? Why should I lie about it? It's solid silver. Doc gives me everything I got. Go to your house, Chihuahua. Go to your house and stay there. I go where I wish. It's your house or the jail till I bring Doc Holliday back here. Why? Never mind why, and give me that pendant. Sorry, Miss Carter, maybe we can have that Sunday dinner some other time. I got your horse ready, Wyatt. Find out where Doc went? I found out. He's riding a bullion coach to Tucson. You and Bert stay in town, keep an eye on Chihuahua. What are you after Doc for? Because I just found this. The pendant. The pendant James showed us the night he was killed. Brought it for Corey Sue, James did. Chihuahua had it. Doc Holliday gave it to her. Sure you don't want me to ride with you? Funny, I suspicioned it was the Clantons all the time. Didn't know Doc went in for shooting kids in the back. No more thanks, I'll get him alone. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a moment, our stars will return with Act Three of My Darling Clementine. Millions of people saw lovely Colleen Townsend on the cover of a national magazine, but it took an alert 20th Century Fox talent scout to see her screen possibilities. Colleen, you look like an outdoor girl. That's true, Mr. Keeley. I love swimming, and I'm crazy about horses. Did you see those fine thoroughbreds 20th Century Fox had for the shooting of Homestretch? Oh, yes, indeed. In fact, one day I met Cornell Wilde down at the corral. He invited me back to the set to watch him do a scene with Maureen O'Hara. You studied that technique? <laughs> well, frankly, Mr. Keeley, the Technicolor sets were so lovely, and Maureen's wardrobe was so gorgeous, well, that's all I had eyes for. You see, pretty clothes are a weakness of mine. Well, how about those shorts and old shirts you wore in your own picture? Scudder who, scudder hey. <laughs> well, maybe they'll let me wear more glamorous costumes next time. June Haver and I had quite a time with our Technicolor suntan makeup. We practically covered ourselves with it for our farmer roles, and, well, of course, it got in our lingerie as well as our costumes. But what do you think, Mr. Kennedy? I think I know, Miss Townsend. The wardrobe department whisked those things away, luxed them, and they look wonderful again. <laughs> yes, that's it. Our things were luxed day after day. And yet, after all the shooting, I do believe they look just as nice as ever. Well, that's not surprising, Miss Townsend, because we've proved by actual tests that Lux Care actually keeps lingerie color fresh and lovely three times as long. Now, if the studio had washed them the wrong way... Although only careless people do that, you'd have found your lingerie looked faded and drab much too soon. That's what happened in our tests. But when identical underthings had gentle Lux care, they still looked lovely after three times as many washings. Well, I've always been a Lux fan myself. But when I found a studio using Lux flakes, too, I was pleased to think how, well, how smart I'd been. Smart girls everywhere are Lux girls, Miss Colleen Townsend. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Now back to our producer, William Keeley. Act three of My Darling Clementine, starring Henry Fonda as Wyatt Earp, Richard Conte as Doc Holliday, and Kathy Downs as Clementine. After a furious three-hour ride across country, Wyatt Earp has overtaken and cut off the northbound stage. At the mouth of the Huachuca Pass... He stands now in the center of the road and signals the stagecoach to come to a stop. That's up, Marshal. What's wrong? I want your passenger driver. 
Climb down, Doc. All right, Marshal. Now what? I'm carrying government money, Marshal. Ain't ought to stop here. I'm not holding you. You can go on. You're not going till I'm back aboard. You heard what he said, Doc. Whip up your horses, driver. Yeah, sure, Marshal, sure. Hey, up there. Hey. You shouldn't have done that, Marshal. The stage is going to Tucson, Doc, but you're coming back to Tombstone. Now, suppose we just talk it over. I told you I'm through talking. Still, you're coming back with me. Sorry, but I'm not going back. Well, in that case, I'll be taking you back. Stay where you are, Doc. Go for your gun, Marshal. You call it, Doc. Come any closer and that's it. I said I'm taking you back, Doc. Ready to come with me now, Doc? That was no accident, was it, Marshal? Shooting the gun out of my hand. It'd be hard to miss it at 12 feet. Why didn't you want to kill me? Because I'm wearing a badge, and the badge says you got to have a trial first. Trial for what? For murder. For killing my kid brother. You've got the wrong man. Have I? Suppose we talk it over on the way back. Come on, Doc. We'll pick up a horse for you and put you in. Come on, bartender. Whiskey for me and my boy, Ike. Maybe a better pour three, Mr. Clanton. Three? Ain't that your other son coming in? Ain't that Billy? Huh? Looks like Billy's got something on his mind, Paul. Wait here, Ike. What's the matter, Billy? Oh, Paul, I just seen him riding into town. The Marshal and Doc Holliday. Well, what you fretting about? They're heading for Chihuahua's place and they're going to start asking Chihuahua questions. You fool. You crazy. I told you to keep away from that girl. But, Paul, what can I do now? What am I going to do? There's only one thing you can do. Go on. Get going. The marshal. Who do you think you are banging on people's doors this time of night? Better let us in, Chihuahua. Doc. Is that you, Doc? Open up, Chihuahua. Oh, Doc, you came back. Why did you tell the marshal I gave you this silver pendant? Well, well, you did, Doc. You, you gave it to me. I never saw this piece of junk before in my life. Who gave it to you? When? You, you can remember everything you gave me, Doc. Sure you did. Don't you remember? When? I, I don't know. A week ago, maybe? What difference does it make? That being the case, Doc, I charge you with the murder of my brother, James Earp. Oh, Doc, he's fooling. I ain't fooling, Chihuahua. It was stolen from my brother the night he was shot in the back. Do you still insist I gave it to you? Oh, no, no, of course not. Then who did? I... I can't be a squealer, Doc. And that's that. Come on, Doc, let's go. Oh, no. No. Let him go. You gonna tell us the truth? Yes. It wasn't, Doc. A few nights ago, it... It was late. Somebody knocked at the door. I I thought it was you, Doc. So I I opened the door and it was somebody else. Who? Oh, Doc, don't be mad. I, I didn't know. I... Who? Billy Clanton. He gave me the jewelry. And then he tried... Oh. Birds! What happened, Wyatt? That shot! Billy Clanton, there he goes, Birds, beyond the barn. Go get him. Billy Clanton. You better stay at the hotel tonight, Chihuahua. Next time they may not miss. He... He did not miss this time. I got everybody out of the saloon, Marshal. But why'd you bring her down here for? She's hurt real bad, Mayor. Put a couple of them poker tables together and set some lamps around them. Give him a hand, Baldy. Sure, Marshal. Morg, get out at the hotel. Get Miss Carter. She's a nurse. Tell her to stop by Doc's room and get that doctor's bag. I told you I can't do it. You gotta do it, Doc. She was badly hurt, and I stopped being a doctor three years ago. You said she had to be operated on. And why haven't you sent to Wachuca for the army doctor? That'd take hours. He may not even be there. Doc, you're gonna operate. I'll try. I'll do what I can. I'll be in the kitchen. We'll need boiling water. She's unconscious again, Marshal. Yeah, Bully. Billy Clanton, huh? Maybe your brother got him. You heard them shots before. He'd have been back by now. No, I guess Burge has got a chase on his hands. He'll get him. I'm ready whenever you are, John. Thanks, Clem. Better move that lamp a little closer. She seems to be regaining consciousness. It's a pity. Chihuahua. Sorry, Doc. Still mad. No, honey, look. I haven't got anything to put you to sleep with, so this is going to hurt like blazes. Yell, scream, holler, anything you like. Bite on this towel, Chihuahua. It may help. Thanks. Miss, 
me to place. Just nod your head when you're ready. Oh. Hold her hands, Marshal. May you watch her feet. Now bite on that towel, Chihuahua. Bite hard. Oh. Oh, Ma. Ma. What is it? I'm Virgil Earp. I'm looking for your brother. There was a shooting in town. I followed him here to this house. There's a deputy here, Pa. He can come in. He's right in there, Mr. Earp. On the bed. He's dead. My boy, Billy. Shot down on the streets of Tombstone. Murdered. It's too bad it had to end this way, Mr. Clinton. He got off his horse, walked in, and dropped down dead. Who shot him, deputy? I did. I was doing my duty. Yeah. Sometimes killing is a man's duty. You can go back to town now, can't you? Yes. I'm sorry. Hand me that rifle, Finn. Here, Paul. Open the window. Mr. Earp? Yeah? Get your horses, boys. We're going into town. It's all over now, Chihuahua. I'm all finished. It, it doesn't hurt anymore, Doc. Yeah, you're all right now, honey. You've been a brave girl. We're taking you to the hotel, Chihuahua. You'll be more comfortable there. Morgan, if you and the mayor... Sure, ma'am. Ready, mayor? Gently now. I'll go with her, John. Thanks, Clem. I'm awfully proud of you, Dr. Holliday. How about a drink, Doc? No, I, I've i got to get cleaned up. I'll be over in a few minutes, Clem. You have a drink, Marshal? I could use one, Baldy. That Doc, oh, he sure did it, didn't he, Marshal? Yeah. Baldy, have you ever been in love? Me? No, Marshal, never. Been a bartender all my life. <laughs> well, I... I better get started looking for Verge. You'll find his body in front of the hotel. Clint. So you'll find me and my boys waiting for you at the Wells Fargo Corral. The mayor's forming a posse, Wyatt. Be over in a little while. First James and now Verge. No. No posse. This is just for you and me, Morg. I was hoping you'd say that. There's four of them Clantons. That's all right. They're walled in on that corral, all right. Baldy saw them. It's just at the edge of town. Here comes Doc. Yeah. How's Chihuahua? Chihuahua is dead. Dr. John Holliday. <laughs> when do we get the Clantons? We? Well, thanks, Doc, but... It's all Wyatt... right. It's all right, Morg. I kind of think Doc wants to come along. We go after him at sunup, Doc. Thanks. <laughs> Here they come, Paul. Three of them, huh? Ike, Sam. Shut up. Stay where you are, Sam. You too, Ike. And maybe others coming in from around the back. It's them all right. The marshal, his brother, and Doc Holliday. Make a pretty target, son. Yeah. Walking straight down the road there. They're crazy. But on your gun, but they could... wait till they get closer, you fool. Stay undercover, Ike. You too, Sam. Don't worry, Paul. Finn. Get behind the post. They're splitting up, Paul. Let them. One to the left, one to the right. And one keeps coming straight ahead. Paul, let them have it. In good time, son. All in good time. Morning, Mr. Clanton. Cover him, Finn. What do you want? He's stuck in behind the stable. Let's talk a while. Well, now, you go right ahead and talk. I got a warrant here for you and your son charging the murder of James and Virgil Earp. There's also a charge of cattle rustling. I'm giving you a chance to submit now to the proper authority. Uh, you come right on and serve your warrants, mister. Which one of you killed James? I did. And the other one, too. And I'm killing you this morning. Tight! In back here! Give it to him, boys! I got him! I got Doc! <laughs> Doc! 
Better come out of that shed, Mr. Clanton, while you're still alive. Mr. Clanton, you saw what's happened. You're the only one left now. He's opening the door, Wyatt. Careful. Throw out your rifle, Mr. Clanton. Now come out with your hands up. My boy. I, Sam, Finn. They're dead. But I ain't gonna kill you. I hope you live a hundred years. Feel just a little what my pa's gonna feel. That's your horse over there. My horse? Yeah. Yeah. Get in the saddle and keep going. Get out of town. Start wandering. You're letting them get away? Yeah, an old man who's seen his sons die. Where's Doc? Back of the shed there. Doc. A lot of good I was to you. It's all right, Doc. You couldn't help it. I got one of them, didn't I? Yeah, you got one of them. I had to start coughing. Sorry. We'll get you back to the hotel, Doc. You'll be all right. No. I knew this cough would kill me one way or another. Doc. Doc. Wyatt, look out. Old man Clanton. Well, he won't be trying to shoot any more men in the back. You should have known he'd have a gun in his saddle. Thanks, Morg. Well, I... I guess we can turn in our badges now. Come on, Wyatt. Got some ground to cover today. Be right there, Morg. I'm sorry to see you leave, Wyatt. Thank you, ma'am. There were so many things I wanted to say, and now nothing seems appropriate. Yes, ma'am, I... Yeah, I know. The mayor says you might be staying here a while, maybe helping get a school started. Maybe. Well, that's mighty nice, ma'am. Me and Morg are going out to see Pa, tell him what happened. I might come east again get some cattle, maybe stop by here again. Stop by the schoolhouse? Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, Wyatt. Ma'am, I sure like that name of Clementine. Before our stars return for their curtain calls, I'd like to ask the women in our audience a question. How do you wash dishes? After every meal? Twice a day? Once a day? There's a lot of debate on which method is most efficient. It might interest you to know that many home economists say you can save considerable time if you wash the dishes from all three meals together, instead of washing them after each meal. That is, of course, if you scrape the dishes first and rinse them well with warm water. Now, another way to make dishwashing go faster is to use Lux Flakes. Just pour in enough to make rich suds, turn on the water, and in a flash the suds billow up. Lux flakes dissolve fast, leave no gummy undissolved bits to stick to the dishes. A quick hot water rinse, and your dishes are sparkling clean. Dishes dry without wiping, too. Best of all, Lux is thrifty for dishes. Lux flakes actually go so much further and are so rich, ounce for ounce, that they wash up to twice as many dishes as any of ten other leading soaps tested. But here's the thing you ladies will be most interested in. No matter how many times a day you wash dishes... You won't get dishpan hands if you use Lux. Lux suds are so gentle, they won't redden and roughen your hands as strong soaps often do. In fact, if strong soaps have been making your hands red and dry, try changing tomorrow to Lux Flakes. Scores of women proved by actual tests that changing to Lux actually takes away dishpan redness, makes red, rough hands smooth and soft again. Now, isn't Lux worth trying? Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. There's more to come as we bring our three stars back to the footlights for a curtain call. Henry Fonda, Richard Conte, and Kathy Downs. <laughs> you made the Old West seem very real tonight. Thanks, Bill. Actually, it seemed very real to us when we were shooting the picture. Is it true about you being surrounded by Indians most of the time? Yes, in fact, the producer hired a lot of them as extras. Did you pick up any of the language? Oh, simple words like nanya for rain and shushe for papoose. Papoose? Sure, Indian baby. Oh, I thought you meant the rear end of a railroad train. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Indians were really mighty helpful when it came to keeping us posted on the weather. You don't mean they could predict the weather. Well, Codger could. Every morning we'd ask him what it was going to do and he'd tell us. Never missed, huh? Oh, he failed us once. At least he shook his head and said he didn't know. What reason did he give? His radio had broken down that morning. 
<laughs> well, Bill, if that Indian is listening in tonight, I'm sure he's waiting to hear what's on for next week. And we're glad to tell him, because next Monday from the studios of Universal International, we're presenting that current howling comedy success, The Egg and I. And our stars are Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray. Both, as you know, from the original screen cast. That's a very funny picture, Bill. And I'm sure it will make a delightful play for us. The story of two refreshing people who seek peace and riches on a chicken farm and end up more scrambled than the eggs. Sounds like something to crow about. We'll be listening. Good night. Good night, Good night and our sincere thanks. <laughs> Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray in The Egg and I. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Have you taken a can of used fat to your meat dealer lately? Ask him what he pays. You'll be surprised and delighted at the high prices you can get for used fat now. Up to four times as much as last year. That extra money for used fats cuts a mighty nice piece off your meat or grocery bill. So keep a tin can right out in sight and add used fat to it every day. America is still desperately short of fats and oils for making soap and scores of other products. Take advantage of these new high prices being paid by saving every drop of used fat. Tonight's screenplay, My Darling Clementine, was based on a book by Stuart N. Lake. Henry Fonda will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Daisy Kenyon. Richard Conti appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Kathy Downs will next appear for 20th Century Fox in The Miracle on 34th Street. Heard in tonight's cast were Earl Ross as Clanton, Carlton Cadell as Morgan, Paula Winslow as Chihuahua, and George Neese, Cliff Clark, Norman Field, Clark Gordon, Tim Graham, Eddie Marr, Bill Johnstone, Tyler McVeigh, Charles Seal, and Edwin Max. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is rebroadcast to our service men and women overseas through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Egg and I with Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray. Spry. When you bake and pry. Spry. For your cake and pie. Spry. Get your shortening by. Rely on Spry. Yes, it's Spry for pastry so tender, flaky, not sweet, any pie filling tastes more delicious. You'll say pastry is extra delicate, better tasting with Spry. Rely on Spry. S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Egg and I with Claudette Colbert and Fred McMurray. And why not tune in to Joan Davis every Monday night over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.